students, so we are starting the last module that is module 11. So, in the previous modules what we have seen is we have started with the canonical partition function, derived the partition function, then went for microcanonical ensemble, then grand canonical and other ensembles. Then we also saw how we can derive the virial equation of state and then we went to solids, the Einstein model and then again to liquids we first got into the lattice Boltzmann's or lattice based models and then we finally went and derived the radial distribution function, the pair distribution function. So, and also derived some pre-monomial properties. Now, what to do with these properties? So, now you have all the set of equations, you can express all the thermodynamic properties. Now, the issue is how to use in your system. So, now we are mostly interested in solving equations of motion. So, you want to know what property we can derive out of this solving the equations of motion. So, we will see in this, we will apply those knowledge which you have gained in the previous modules, use those techniques in the actual applied field that is the computer simulation methods. And later on we will go to the perturbation theory. So, the computer simulation methods as you know are a set of two important methods that is the molecular dynamic simulation and Monte Carlo simulation. So, this current lecture actually we will discuss the molecular dynamic simulation. So, we have been talking about a interatomic potential, we have talked about the LJ potential, the hard sphere potential, square wave potentials. Now, those potentials can be represented in terms of force field. So, what is force field? Force field is a some sort of external field. So, we will see that what are those. Then we will see the non-bonded interaction because non-bonded interaction are the ones where molecules are within a certain constraint volume and how they interact with each other. Then the Verlet equation, the Verlet equation means or the algorithm implies we have a set of atoms, how to push them, how to push them so that they mimic the actual system, we will see that. The periodic box image is also important, the periodic box image we will be seeing because we are talking about actual system, actual system is not 1 or 2 or 10 molecules, it is of the order of Avogadro number of molecules. So, can we actually do all the pairs of all the Avogadro's molecules? No, we cannot do, we have to make some assumptions. So, those assumptions are quantified in sort of periodic box image, we will talk more about this in detail. Then finally, we talk about uh, the various ensembles. So, if you remember we discussed previously the NVT ensemble, then the NPT ensembles, okay. So, in this the canonical partition function issue is, okay, you can fix a volume, you can fix number of molecules, but then you do not have any control over temperature. So, you have to have some algorithm which actually controls the temperature. Same way, you can have number of molecules you fix the temperature, but what about the pressure? Because if you want to fix pressure, you have to vary volume. If you want to fix volume, you have to vary pressure, simple. So, in that case, we will see some algorithms which discusses the pressure and temperature control. So, let us see first the force field. So, prior to that, what is MD? We have just now seen molecular dynamics. Here, the forces are computed between molecules are have to be calculated explicitly. The motion of the molecules and then computed by solving Newton's equation of motion. So, it is all basic physics law. So, we are be using the Newton's laws of motion to push forward the molecules. So, now we need to have, let us say you have a system, let us say water molecules. So, you need structure for the water molecules. Those structure for the water molecules, water molecules are very simple, but those complicated structures, we usually take it from their crystal structure. That is how the atoms are connected with each other, what is the bond length between the atoms, what is the bond angle between three atoms, likewise. So, all these are stored in the crystal structure. So, usually in the case of computer simulation various packages we will be doing which is called as protein data bank PDB files, it uh, saves all the structures. And then the velocities, okay, initially these atoms, set of atoms do not have any velocities. How do you start? You start with some random number, let us say you give some Boltzmann distribution, okay. Start with some, let us say Boltzmann distribution. Random number 
and uh, assume some Boltzmann distribution of the velocities. And then obviously, if you give velocity, temperature will change and if you change temperature, velocity will change. They are related to each other and you know what are these, that is relation is, you know the total energy is 3 by 2 nkt. So, you have the energy and temperature are related to finally to kinetic energy. So, all these are related to each other, kinetic energy of the atoms, the temperature and the energy. So, ultimately you have to scale down the velocity to obtain the desired temperature. So, you start with some initial guess by the random numbers, then give a distribution to the velocities and then you start the trajectory. So, molecules have started moving. Now, from the initial positions, you calculate those velocities and forces. So, now how we calculate velocity forces, I will come back to that later. So, it means after a certain instant of time, positions and velocities of the atoms at a small time interval is calculated. Now, the important question can come, what should be the time interval? Because the time interval, if it is too large, then your energy will be exceedingly large because the molecule or the particular atom will gain so much kinetic energy that when it collides with the next molecule, the energy of the system will shoot up. And uh, you cannot have very less time step because if you have a very less time step, they will be very close to each other, then you may not observe several physical phenomena. So, you have to be a trade-off between these two. So, obviously, from new positions, again you have to calculate the force and another time step in made. So, this cycle has to be repeated. So, you are having this position, let us say position 1, again position 2, like that again position 3. So, you have to also calculate V1, okay V1 you go with the initial guess, then V2, V3 like that it propagates in space. This cycle has to be repeated several times in the course of full simulation. So, how many, there are two issues, what is the time step between two different position, another is how long do you do? So, how long do you do is some sort of debate because it depends upon your computational resource, how good your computer is or how, so you have to run since we are talking about number of molecules, you cannot possibly do it on a normal desktop computer, you need a cluster or high performance computing system HPC to run this set of systems because they will divide the job parallelly among different nodes or cores. Okay, so, you cannot possibly do with one second because that is the time we can measure with our clock, one second of time. Because what they have found out, the researchers, that a single time step is order of around one femtosecond. One femtosecond is 10 to the power of minus 15 second. So, what they say is between these two steps V1 and V2, you have to measure T1 after every one femtosecond, in short it is Fs. So, now you see if I want to run for total of one second, it means one second, what is the total actual time I have to write or number of steps I have to calculate, that will be one second by one into 10 to the power of minus 15 second. So, now what is that order? that will be close to 10 to the power of 15 times, you have to update the position, that is impossible for any computer. So, what they do is, people have said that this order of nanosecond or some case milliseconds is sufficient to do. Well, milliseconds will depend upon uh, the power of computing you have with you, nanosecond is 10 to the power of minus 9. So, if you divide by the femtosecond, 10 to the power of minus 15 this becomes 1 lakh steps basically. So, 1 lakh times you have to update these positions. So, we have fixed the step. So, kindly remember that molecules are attached to each other via bonds. So, they are not breaking. So, it means whenever you start with a oxygen molecule, hydrogen with that is water, this bond length will be changing, but the bond will never break. But nowadays, some recent phenomena have come where you can study chemical reaction. In that case, you call that as reactive force field. So, force field, it should be reactive in nature. So, it should capture all the bond breaking and bond formation. But in this case, whatever you start with, the arrangement of atoms, that will remain till the end. It will not change. So, now, what if I say that instead of 1 femtosecond, okay, I go less, I go 2.5 femtoseconds. 
But in this case, you are observable, they have found out will not be visible. So, you will not be able to let us say compute the density or the viscosity or diffusivity. So, it will be error. So, this is one of the time step which has been fixed by definition. And if you take a let us say, okay, I want to complete the simulation in a quick time. So, instead of this numerator to be 1 femtosecond, let me half it, let me make it 50,000. So, if you want to make 50,000, you have to multiply this by 2, it means you do with 2 femtosecond. So, it means the molecule will traverse a long period of time from position P1 to P2. This will be a significant amount of time of 2 femtosecond. So, by that time it collides with another, it goes to this distance, it may likely collide with another atom. So, its energy will be huge, your energy shoots up because two atoms then becomes close to each other. So, your simulation will become unstable, it stops. So, a good trade off is you start with 1 femtosecond as a time step for organic compounds. Now, here we have to calculate force. Initially, you are starting the simulation by Boltzmann distribution by a random number. Now, what about the next step? This force is actually derived from interaction potential which is a function. This function is called force field. So, it is a potential. So, if you do this derivative with respect to coordinates, it will give force. So, derivative of this potential with respect to coordinate is give source. So, obviously, it is a coordinates, nuclear coordinates, it does not depend upon the electron position. Now, all those electron position whatever we have read in the previous modules has been subsumed while we discuss the derivative. So, at every position you will get these values for energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. Now, when you average them over a sufficient amount of time or number of cycles, we obtain the properties of the system. What are the properties we are studying or we can study? You can calculate rho, you can calculate the viscosity, you can calculate the diffusivity, Dij values, you can also calculate ionic conductivity, then other derived properties may be isothermal compressibility okay, or expansivity isothermal expansivity or isothermal compressibility, all this. So, how compressible your system is under temperature and pressure, all this you can calculate. So, all these are time dependent properties. So, that is why at various time intervals you get the positions, guess the velocities and then average out the scalar properties, you get the average property. So, that is the ensemble average, we call that ensemble. So, whenever there are two braces made and if it is E here or if this V here, it means I am talking about the average values which we have derived in the previous modules. So, then this ensembling part comes into the picture that is the core of the statistical thermodynamics comes into the picture. Now, there is another method called as Monte Carlo simulation. The one advantage is that Monte Carlo cannot be used for time dependent properties unlike MD. So, it can give MD time dependent responses to perturbation, rheological properties and spectra and also transport properties such as viscosity and surface tension. So, how do we then start? First, we have to solve the classical equation of motion. The force on any atom is equal to mass of that atom into this is actually the double derivative, this double derivative of the position vector, okay. That is force is equal to m into acceleration, mass into acceleration or I write in terms of coordinates which is equal to a vector quantity R i and you do a double derivative. So, forces F i acting on the atoms are derived from a potential. Now, where is this force is derived from? From a potential. Potential is a function of the vector R and R is having the different position vectors of all the atoms. If we are considering n atoms, so it will have the positions of all the n atoms. So, these are vectors. So, if you do this, you will get the force. You take the derivative of the position vector with respect to potential. So, thus force field we term as applied potential. That is, it is an external field given to a system of atoms. Sometimes this force field is very important because it refers to the extent to which a classical molecular simulation accurately predicts the thermophysical properties. So, if your force field is correct, you should get the average properties to be equivalent to experimental property. If it is not correct, that means there is something wrong in the assumption 
or the properties of the force field. So, what does this force field comprise of? Let us see. Now, in a conventional force field, it will have uh, calculations for energy and force and for that you require, what are the list of atom types? What are the list of atoms? What are atom typing rules? The functional forms for the component of energy expression and the parameters for the functional term. List of atom times means if I want CH, if I can write also CH can be like, like this, it may be sp2 hybridized, it may be sp hybridized like that, what it is. So, for a instead of individually mentioning each and every atom explicitly, we can measure whether that CH is sp2 hybridized or sp hybridized or sp3 hybridized, something like that. So, like that OH for example, it is the atom type. So, if suppose carbon is in the sp form connected to hydrogen atom, so we say carbon is having a sp type of bond with the other atom. In this case, carbon is the atom type here or carbon is making sp2 type of bond with the other atom. A H I am showing it for representative purposes. So, we will then actually classify whether that carbon is from sp2 type of atom or sp3 type of atom. Similarly, oxygen is it a type of alcohol? So, the oxygen is the oxygen type present in alcohol. If that oxygen is present in term in ketone, so it will be different atom type like that. Then obviously, list of atoms, so carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus likewise. So, one is type of atoms, then how it is connected? What type of atom means? What is the atom type? That is whether it is bonded by either sp or sp2 like that. So, that is called atom typing rules, how this particular atom is attached to the other atom. So, the force field will recognize only that part. So, even if you have let us say 1 lakh atoms, so these 1 lakh atoms can be compressed let us say in terms of let us say 20 or 30 types of atom. So, this is the parameter. So, total potential is the, the first 4 terms. So, term 1, term 2, term 3, and term 4 represents the bonded interaction. Okay. So, this is the bond means what is the vibration of the bond about its equilibrium position. So, that is k into r square because we know force is minus k x. So, this will be k into r square. So, r is r minus r naught. Then what is the fluctuation in the angle? So, theta naught is all naught subscript represents equilibrium positions. Then this is a dihedral compare. What is dihedral? I will tell you. So, dihedral is something like this. If you have four set of atoms, well, these are two, two atoms, bonds. These are three atoms, angles. So, obviously, this will be four atoms. So, what is this four atoms? Dihedral is something like this. How can you actually place four atoms in space and fix their origin. So, let us say you have these 4 atoms numbered as 1, 2, 3 and 4, these 4 atoms. So, first you make a plane of 3 atoms, let us say this is the plane. So, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, this is that atom plane. Now, where can you put the fourth atom? You can fourth atom you can place anywhere you want. So, wherever you put, so obviously there will be 2 angles. So, first is so, if you put like this and then connect to the last two atoms, the fourth atom. So, if I connect it like this, I could not possibly, let me make it again so that it becomes much more easier to understand. First, I will make a plane of the first three atoms. Let us say it's one, uh, atom 1 connected to atom 2, which is connected to atom 3. So, now if I want to put the fourth atom here, so let us make a plane, the last two points with this particular plane. So, if you notice, uh, just make some adjustment, come to know, uh, this looks much better. So, it is basically while I make the plane 1, 2, 3, I put, I can insert the atom in any position, okay. I can put the atom at any position, but once you put the uh, position, so this angle, this particular angle, this will represent here phi, okay. So, it means if I have this phi angle, I can fix the 4 because we know this particular 
plane is made by atom 2, 3, 4. So, what is the angle between plane 1, 2, 3 and 2, 3, 4? That will give the phi as given here and this is something which is at equilibrium. So, it measures again the fluctuation at any time step. Okay, and improper's this will come only into that picture when you have compounds such as having aromatic rings, then only it will come. Otherwise, for a linear molecule, this will not come into the picture. So, it is like if the particular aromatic ring is bent, if the aromatic ring is bent, we present it with some angle psi naught, which is equilibrium and psi is at any instant of time. So, all this psi, r, theta, all these are at any interval of time. So, then the remaining is the major part of any MD calculation, this is the non-bonded part. So, non-bonded part consists of the, this you must be very familiar, this is the, this is your van der Waals or in this case the non-electrostatic forces, in this case it is measured by the LJ in terms, Leonard Jones type of expression and then this is the columbic. So, of the most of the electrostatic contribution is due to this columbic form of expression because this goes in, in all this expression in the bonded terms it goes directly with the distance but in this case it is inversely to the distance. So, you should have a different technique for actually converging or doing the derivatives. So, now you see we have got all the particular functional forms 1, 2, 3, 4 are non are bonded, 5 and 6, this is the 5th and 6th are the non-bonded terms which is the LJ term that is van der Waals term plus the columbic term. Okay? So, it means if I want to describe this, this is, this is also available in one of my previous NPTEL course, this particular diagram. So, I am taking it from there. So, this states that the dihedral just now I explained. So, maximum you will have 4 atoms 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you can ask if there are more atoms connected to each other, why I have not taken this. So, they assume they assume that once you go away and away, so with the central atom the effect it is the presence of the away or the far apart atoms is negligible. So, that is why we stop at 4. So, that may a particular keyword you can mention in the simulation packages. So, if you notice, so you can bond can vibrate like this, so contribution is this, angle can vibrate in this manner, contribution is this, dihedral you know this is one of the plane 1, 2, 3 and then again 2, 3, 4 is another plane, the angle between them is called phi. So, all this with this atom, this one, this one together forms the total force field. This force fields are of various types, so a form of this particular expression. Some of the commonly terms known as the charm force field or you can have the OPLS force field okay, or the amber force field. All provides this UR value, okay, but with a different form. This is a charm type form, this is a charm expression, but OPLS amber also a similar type. So, this is you can opt it in your molecular dynamics packages, you can uh, provide a keyword that I want to select this charm. If it you select charm, so it means you are using this expression. If you are using this expression, then this particular things k b, k theta, k psi and then again k psi here, e i j, sigma i j, these are called as force field parameters, this sigma i j, e i j. So, now sigma Eij of unlike atoms again we will be using the Lorentz Berthelot equation that is we will use for unlike atoms a algebraic average for two atoms and a geometric mean for two atoms in case of the well depth. Okay? So, this is the expression the Lj parameters for unlike atoms, arithmetic mean, geometric mean. So, whenever you are talking about sigma ij, it is we are talking about this one for ij when the two atoms are of different origin and whenever sigma ij is this. So, this is a major part because previous things you can already insert r naught, theta naught, this phi and this psi naught, 
by quantum chemical calculation you can optimize the molecule you know all these values r naught theta naught these are known to you but these are not known to you but you are knowing the a pure component sigma i and sigma j you can use this expression to compute what will be the values for unlike terms and q i q j represents the coulombic charge on atom i and j and r i j represents the interatomic distance. So, the strategy how do we do that? So, m d function evaluations require computation of the forces. Force calculation is the one which computes which take huge amount of CPU time is as much as 90 percent of your calculations take this force computation because you know there is a derivative term. So, you have to do the derivative at every instant of time. We have talked about 1 lakh times time steps. So, every instant of time or every time step you have to apply this force calculation. So, you consume a lot of 90 percent of the CPU time in this case. But uh, we know it has to be performed you cannot escape from this force calculation and it has to be performed once per every time. But we may ask do we require to calculate the force computation for all the pairs? because some of the atomic pairs do not change much. So, sometimes what they do the intramolecular bond terms are not required. So, they just take it out because as bonds have very high vibrational frequencies. So, in the potential they are not required. So, sometimes these bonds are treated as constraint to a fixed length. So, if you say a carbon and hydrogen bond there will be many such type of bonds in your system. So, but their vibrations are very less in that case. So, instead of computing the force on these type of pairs, can we fix them? Can we just take them as a point as a particle? So, we can do that there is a algorithm where you have to invoke this algorithm in the molecular dynamics packages that is called the Sheck algorithm. So, just now I talked about the force field amber, charm and OPLS. They can be used for larger molecules. They consist all the force field means they constitutes all those values of k theta k phi. So, it means we will be having by default all these values. So, what they do in the condensed phase is in suppose amber you make the structure there is a particular website what you do is you insert that particular structure in it then it will search the database and it will tell you what is that atom type. And once you tell it is the atom type, then it will also tell you what is the k theta all those force field parameters. It will automatically generate the force field file actually. Okay, because these particular expressions that is for parameters the functional form k theta, k phi, k psi, then k uh, you know all these force are called force field parameters. These force field parameters are derived by quantum chemical calculation combined with thermophysical and phase coexistence data. We will not go into details how they are derived, but we have these values readily available in the database of either AMBER, CHARM or OPLS. So, now how to start integrating algorithms? Now, how to push these atoms one by one? So, these are the expressions. So, this is not visible, it is a double derivative. So, P i is the momentum, M i is the mass of the atom. So, if you uh, derive it with respect to mass, you will get this force acceleration and obviously, single digit here if you take the derivative of the momentum you get force. Okay. This you will get acceleration, this is acceleration and this is your force. So, with the momentum you can get both acceleration and force. So, now we have to advance the system variables through a discrete time step. So, it means once we advance it you have a force acting on all atoms. So, this algorithm should shall be in such a manner devised in such a manner. So, if you move ahead one step you should be able to go back to that again the previous step. So, we call that that reversible time integrator. So, for that there is an algorithm called as Verlet algorithm and it depends upon the central finite difference formula. So, what you do is here. So, let us expand it sort of Taylor series. So, in this case r, so let us say you have a vector r, you write what will be the vector r position in terms of the previous position. So, I will write like this dr by dt into del t, I am expanding this 
and the Taylor series expansion. So, half of then you will have d2r by dt square, then delta t whole square, okay. Then likewise I have this 1 by 3 factorial d cube r by dt cube of delta t whole cube likewise. Now again I will can another I can write this so these r are all function of time, okay this r vector is function of position as well as time. Now I can also write t minus delta t, so everything is same but this will be minus plus half of whole square then minus 1 by 3 factorial everything is same only you will be having the change in the sign. Okay. Now add these two, so I have expanded the coordinates at t plus delta t and t minus delta t. Now add these two, if you add these two you will get r of t plus delta t. So, the first term cancels what you have is 2r t plus uh, this has to be added while you add this becomes 2r t and the second term cancels. So, you will have directly the third term and the third term has half and half. So, you add them together it becomes 1. So, I can simply write here as yes, d2r by dt square into delta t square. Okay. Then I am not worrying anything, so remaining terms is very small, so I can write then as a function of the order of delta t to the power of 4 because cube terms will go away and then uh, whatever remaining terms is the order of delta t to the power of 4. Okay. So, or I can write down in another manner that is r. So, if I want to know the current step, so it will be r plus t delta t equal to 2 delta minus r. So, it means what I am doing is I am taking this this side. So, this r t minus t I am getting it to the right hand side r t minus delta t then then the remaining terms will be as it is. Again it will be a order of delta 2 to the power of 4. So, if I want to progress with a time step of delta t you need to know the current time step and the previous time step. Okay? Then you will be able to compute what will be the next time step. Okay? So, now you can also do this in this manner also, you can write this also in this manner in terms of force 2rt minus r of t minus delta t plus, see this d2r by dt square is acceleration. So, I can write here as a vector of force by m into delta t whole square okay. plus you have the order of delta 2 to the power of 4. So, it means I can write down this next position as the sum of or I can uh, with the help of the current position, previous position and the force acting on that particular mass that is this. So, with this I can calculate. Now, position at the previous step is thus saved and used. What do I get from this Borel algorithm? The position at the previous step is saved and is used to project the position of the next step. So, it eventually I am using the values of delta t, t plus delta t and I am predicting the value of t plus delta t by knowing the value at t and t minus delta t. That is what the Wellet algorithm talks about. But still we have not come across any velocity. So, for the velocity what you will have to do is you use a finite difference method so, in this case again I can write down in terms of uh, 4 and this distance. So, you have the current position, 
you have the previous position. You use a finite difference formula, you get the velocity at the current time step. In this way, you can actually uh, calculate the velocity. So, the velocity is also calculated in this manner. So, now issue is so, so many number of atoms. So, it will be negligible because the number of atoms here will be negligible as compared with the number of atoms contained in a microscopic piece of matter. So, it means what we can do, we call this as a periodic box. Here, the particles are enclosed in a box and box is replicated to infinite direction by the rigid translation in all the three Cartesian coordinates completely filling the space. So, what is it? The minimum image convention we define. The minimum image convention is each atom interacts with the nearest atom or image in the periodic array. It means if I make a periodic array like this, let us say uh, I make a something periodic array, I will make like this. What does that mean? This is a three dimensional box, I cannot show it in uh, so in the three dimensional space. So, you can assume the particular box of cubical box is replicated perpendicular to you and perpendicular away to you and to the left and y axis everywhere it is replicated this box. So, what happens at central box? So, if I make this further smaller boxes, so it assume that these boxes are replicated. So, this is one central box, you have boxes in this direction, in this direction, this direction, this direction everywhere. So, you have boxes surrounding the central cubical box. So, in this case, let us suppose you have some here, some molecule which is just crossing. You have another molecule here, another molecule here okay, and you have another molecule here. Okay. Now, uh, because it is crossing in this manner, you have four atoms present within it. Then there will be some atoms, let us say here, it is escaping to the other box. So, once this atom enters this box, the other atom will escape this box. So, it means the central number of atoms in this particular box will always remain constant. So, that will be replicated everywhere. I am putting here here, here, again here. So, everywhere it will be something like this. And then if you put some central atom here, you have to define what calculation I should do. So, this particular distance, the radius of the possible interaction is called as RC, which I have written here. It is the cutoff distance. So, what does this cutoff distance means? It is that particular sphere through which all the interaction has to be made. So, if any atom is coming into the box, some atom has to leave the box, so as to maintain the number of atoms in the central box to be constant. Okay. So, that is why we say that all these box, whether it is this box, this box, this box, this box, this box, this box, these are all images of the central box. That is why we call it as minimum image convention. Means each atom will interact with the nearest atom or image. So, in this case, the nearest atom here, if I draw this cutoff, is this, that is the image. Since it is enters here, we will take up only this atom, we will not take this atom because it is outside the sphere of influence. So, that is what I say, each atom interacts with the nearest atom or image. So, cutoff means till watch particular sphere of radius, I will take the interaction. So, then also there is a problem because if I do such a calculation, uh, there should be some known distance or known pairs where I have calculated. So, it may happen that the same pairs are again coming and coming and again I am calculating. So, you are getting because in this there are an n number of atoms. So, it may happen that I am taking the pair of atoms, I am quanting twice, thrice, four times. So, what we do is we add an extra skin, we will say a skin on top of this particular cutoff. So, the cutoff is surrounded by a skin and between the distance of cutoff and this skin, the computer will try to remember 
what are those atoms which are in there. So for that we discuss this pairless distance. So this is a skin around cutoff so as to take all the pairs. So it means um, if I want to draw in this manner, so let us suppose this is a central box with RC as in the previous, you add the skin of it. So this will be your pair list distance R pair list RP. So it means instead of identifying each and every atom whether they have crossed the interaction range or not, you just see which are the atoms coming inside this skin. So calculate those interaction between the atoms. So pairwise interaction only between these two atoms. So then but you have to remember okay I have calculated these two atoms, I should not calculate again. So it the computer will store all this memory so that it calculation is done not done twice. So this pair list distance how will you know what is this skin particular dimension should be? This distance should be chosen in such a manner that is your way of looking at it based on your system such that this particular difference of pair list minus cutoff no atom pair moves in a cycle. So only pairs appearing in the list are checked in the force routine and time to time this list will be reconstructed. So this distance how will you choose so that none of them moves more than this distance in one cycle. Okay? So that is the way you can reduce the force calculation. You should not do the calculation again and again. Then there is the normal interaction, the long range interaction. Okay, the short range we have discussed. What about the long range? So some of those interaction may be between ions or between the dipole-dipole interaction which have effect in the long range. So that we do it by a eval summation. So eval summation means you are describing the total potential in a short range and a potential in a long range. Well, this can be easily be solved using the appropriate expression. So this we have already seen the short range, it can be converged to a real space. Real space may apply mathematics with some series or convergence you can actually solve for the short range. But the long range are solved through evolved summation method, what it does is it will solve it in a Fourier space. Okay? So as to make the entire interaction because this is the distances come as a reciprocal, it is inversely proportional like in the LJ or in the Columbic terms. So that is why you use Fourier space for the long range interaction, real space for short range and Fourier space for the long range. I am not writing the interaction, that particular expression because it is a given in the eval summation method. So it will sum the interaction between an ion and all its periodic images to so infinite direction. Then comes the non bonding van der Waals interaction. In this also we do not complete all the pair. So we will give a algorithm multiple time step. Here what we will do, we will break the force on each atom. The force on each atom is broken into two pieces, a quickly varying local composition and a slowly varying long range component. We will apply a switching function. So where you stop for short range and from where you start long range. So that is given in terms of a particular uh, function that is the short range, short range that is some uh, value you proceed RS, RS. So you have to fix this RS. So it means that uh, you will have a value which is the switching function to be 0 when Ri, Rij is greater than Rc, it will be equal to 1 when you have this particular function defined. And in between this RC and RS, you want to apply this switching function. So between this RC and RS, you use this expression. Okay. So let me see what is that expression. So it means, so it will consist all the bonded and van der Waals interaction as well as that portion of electrostatic interaction for pairs that are separated by less than the local interaction distance by the splitting function. So the long range component consists only of the electrostatic interaction outside of the local interaction distance. Since the long range forces are slowly varying, they are not evaluated every time step. So one of the algorithms that is available in the packages are the RESPA. 
despite the reference system propagator algorithm. So in this case, uh, let us say I want to terminate the non-bond interaction. So what you do is you have let us say when the atoms are close to each other your interaction energy is very high. So as you go up, up, up as you go this is the distance interatomic distance this will go like this, this, this and the long range will never come equal to 0. So a computer cannot do that it has to come to 0. So what it will do it will apply this switch distance R switch such that the switch distance it slowly truncates it to 0 at long distance so that this becomes the cutoff radius. So this energy is then truncated energy of it is obviously a function of the distance it is truncated at the cutoff. So if you do not truncate it, it keeps on going, going, going until it is even at very long distances it is not equal to 0. So you apply the switching function in the previous slide the expression here so that it gets truncated to 0 at this particular r. It saves lot of computational time. So obviously the force computation then will be done periodically. So it means if this is the expression for energy, now it is truncated. So it means if RC is the cutoff, so this will be done at every time step this particular range while this is a long range. It is a force calculation but it does not vary much with distance. So it need not to be calculated every time step. So it is done periodically. So only those pairs whose interatomic distance is between 0 to RC are done at every step. So this is the way you save on the computational time. So now an important aspect is the news hover, there should be one O here, news hover method. So we have talked about this ensembles, NPT ensemble, NPD, now how do you control temperature? So for that what you do, you define the momentum, this is the derivative of the momentum with respect to time which gives force into some friction coefficient multiplied by the momentum. So this is called the friction coefficient. So this friction coefficient is allowed is the function of time it is allowed to vary in time because you need to control temperature. So you can control temperature only if you reduce momentum or velocity. So that is how it actually controls the velocity. Now this is a function of time you can write as a function of time it is the momentum so this is minus nkt by w what is w w is the thermal inertia parameter which is replaced by the decay time so this w is actually replaced by the decay time vt so this is the vt so this decay time helps in controlling the thermal fluctuation when you do the simulation not all point you are may be able to constrain it to a particular temperature there will be some vibration and then n here is a degrees of freedom. So obviously we will have an instantaneous mechanical temperature this tau. This tau will be the instantaneous mechanical temperature and T is the system of interest temperature. System of interest what our interest is at what temperature you want to obtain the values. So it means it will sense okay this tau is very high or tau is very low. So if it is high suppose this particular ratio is very high greater than 1 then it will actually alter this decay time. So the friction coefficient will increase and vice versa if it is low it will decrease. So it will sense the actual fluctuation tau and then it will try to modify this decay time and this decay time modification means I am modifying the friction coefficient. This is the way temperature is controlled and this is called the Neushofer method. Now pressure that was NVT, now NPT, how do you control pressure? You adjust the size of the cell because if you want to adjust pressure you have to adjust volume. So you have to rescale the atomic coordinates of the particular periodic cell. So it will include an additional degree of freedom S corresponding to the volume of the cubical simulation cell so which will adjust itself to equalize the internal applied pressure. So the degree of freedom effectively serves as a piston here this S is nothing but a piston 
with a mass w the piston mass is w so it's something like that is this so here this is the piston okay mass w and have a velocity v so that's what it says you use a piston so that you want to keep all the molecules at a particular pressure so this degree of freedom will mimic the action of a piston on a real system this is what i was telling okay so if this piston will be associated with the kinetic energy so this is the kinetic energy this is the velocity this is w is the mass so you do that you get the kinetic energy and the pressure will be controlled by evaluating the actual pressure p to the defined pressure d pd is the desired pressure divided by tp what is tp tp is the time constant for pressure fluctuation and this tp is given by this expression so this expression here i have introduced another parameter this like in the previous one is the friction coefficient this is the parameter for controlling the pressure so here beta is equal to 1 upon kt delta t is the time step tp here is the as i told you it is the time constant for pressure fluctuation so it means that each step the volume of the cell is scaled by a factor of this what is this significant it is scaled by a factor this factor and the molecular center by a factor this so this factor will take care of the rescaling of the entire cubical box okay like friction coefficient this is analogous to pressure control so what we have we have the expressions now what we do we want to control both of them together we want to control both pressure and temperature together if we are working on npt well temperature you know can be controlled using this now can i couple this expression with the previous slide for the pressure we can do that because this expression we have already obtained from the temperature control that is from nose hover and now we can control this with pressure we call nose hover barostat this is that particular s the momentum versus mv 1 by 3 okay so this is the momentum expression now the momentum expression here takes care of the force minus these two friction coefficients are then added so it will call the friction coefficient individually from the temperature controller and from the pressure controller add up these two and modify the momentum and uh, the friction factor is this for the pressure control is given by this this is dv by dt that is the derivative of the velocity of the piston so obviously this particular expression which is a function of time all this should be a function of time will be given using this expression p minus pd into v by tp square kt so in our simulation what we do we specify the desired pressure time constant decay time and instantaneous temperature of the piston in addition we also give the damping coefficient and the desired temperature if you do this then it will try to control both the pressure as well as temperature so in short for both controlling pressure and temperature you require both the coefficient here coming and you have to use the expression which is dependent on time for both the friction coefficient and for the piston coefficient so for bulk solvent fluid the instantaneous pressure of a simulation cell will have a mean square fluctuation of kt by v beta where beta is the isothermal compressibility having root mean square of 100 to 100 bar for 10000 atom by molecular system that's why the pressure is very difficult to actually control because the root mean square deviation of pressure is very large unlike temperature okay because uh, this expression if you see it is kt v by beta so beta is the isothermal compressibility this value is very high that is the reason the rms is also high so you can find all the expression and detailed methodology in my previous nptel course now let us see the actual what are the properties we can calculate see so we can calculate the specific heat capacity this is cv k beta square into this is again as i told you ensemble average square and this is ensemble average squared then you can also calculate volume expansivity by do v by do t at constant pressure or isothermal compressibility do v by do p at constant temperature 
or you can also write in this manner v square in symbol average by v in symbol average whole square. So, in this case for example, volume expansivity you can calculate for at 3 different pressures let us say p equal to 1 bar, 2 bar and 3 bar undertake or execute 3 different simulation then you will have the slope what is the volume at each of these pressures. So, take the slope of dou v by dou t and divide by the molar volume we will get volume expansivity. Similarly, you can do this for isoval compressibility. Then you have cohesive energy density, this cohesive energy density is what is the internal energy change when a particular molecule goes from liquid to vapor. This is the molar volume and you can also find the Hansen solubility parameter which is square root of this interaction, this internal energy change by the molar volume. Then you can also calculate cell diffusivity and ionic conductivity. So, this is actually the cell diffusivity and ionic conductivity is this expression. In the self diffusivity, this is the follow on the Newton Einstein's equation. So, you calculate what are the difference between the particular coordinate at a particular time and the initial coordinate, and then you square them up and take the ensemble average and take the derivative, you get the self diffusivity. With these values, you can also compute this because this you have calculated from self diffusivity, you can also calculate the ionic conductivity. N is the number of molecules, E is the electronic charge, V is the volume of the cell, K is Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature. So, you can calculate many such physical properties from the ensemble average values. Now, in just to conclude for this lecture, I will just show you the NAMD simulation, how we do. This is a software you can always have explore that is NAMD scalable molecular dynamics is developed by UIUC, it is freely available. So, again here whatever we have studied these are all been written in terms of steps. See, first is initial coordinates. So, select the number of molecules, the force fields, select the initial particular number of molecules and then the force field. What is force field you can choose? The type of expression, Gromax, GAF, packing, all those. Then minimize the system. So, you should see whether the molecules are not overlapping each other, you minimize that. This is a simple conjugate gradient method, no simulation or no techniques is applied. Just to see the overlap should not be there between molecules, otherwise the energy will shoot. Now you assign initial velocity through random number here, heat the system because we are at 0 Kelvin here. So, heat it from 0 to 298.15. So, while you heat your kinetic energy will increase, but your potential energy is remains the same. So, to for that you actually equilibrate. It means you distribute the extra energy obtained in the kinetic energy to other degrees of freedom. If the temperature is fine, you go for production. Once everything is fine, you have the volume to be stabilized then you go for production. Now, production can be run either in NVT or NPT depending upon what property you want to study. Then analysis of trajectory, once everything is done, you will get a entire trajectory file of huge data. So, from that you have to derive these properties, density, viscosity, diffusivity, interaction energy, the radial distribution function, the special distribution function. So, all this coordination number we have already talked. So, there are a number of softwares which you can use, VMD is free ugly option, then you have Travis, these are the softwares which if you give an input of the final output file from the package, it will actually predict this data. Okay. So, these are the software packets, we I am explaining here named, you can also use Amber, Lamps, Gromax. Okay. So, these are typical some time steps I have mentioned, but this time step may differ in your case because you will be using some other molecules. So, you have to choose based on the literature values. So, this is the way the molecular dynamics is set up and started. I okay. will stop here. So, Sandler's book, this chapter 12. I suppose on the one which is discusses the molecular dynamics method, but in not this extensive manner, it will just tell you the major parts, how to obtain the Wallet algorithm, how we can obtain the trajectory. You can find the major part of the molecular dynamics simulation in this particular NPTEL course on molecular simulations in chemical engineering. Thank you.